Welcome to Maths with EJD. So, in this video, we'll be talking about types of sets. Types of sets. So, straight up, we go to talk about the first type, which is known as a null, empty, or void set. So, or I mean, sometimes you can even call it, uh, I think, zero set. I think you can call it zero. Oh, okay, I'm not very sure about that. Let's rest it and then just stay with uh, these three. Um, so null, empty, or void set. That is a type, the first type of set we are considering. Okay. And we need to understand that a null set a null set, also known. Okay, let me not worry about this because we are already told it's either called null, empty, or void set. So it's also known as empty or void set. Is is a set is a set that contains no elements. That contains it contains no elements. So any set that contains no elements is actually empty. Okay, and it is represented, it is represented, it is represented by, you know, empty curly braces or the symbol or the symbol, something that looks like this, zero with a line crossing it. So now you need to understand that the empty set the empty set is unique. It is unique because it has no elements. Because it has no elements. All right? So let's look at some examples of empty sets. Examples. So the first one, let's say we have the set the set of all natural numbers, the set of all natural numbers, less than one, less than one, less than one. Actually, we know that natural numbers are normal counting numbers, starting from one, okay? So there are no natural numbers less than one. So automatically, this is going to be an empty set. So in this case, you have A equals the collection of all x such that x is less than one and then x belongs to the set of natural numbers so this kind of n is what you use to represent natural numbers so this is actually an empty set or if you like this that's an empty set so this right since so okay i mean there's no point i mean the the point it's clear so since there are no elements in it, then it's an empty set, as you can clearly see right here. So because there are no natural numbers less than one, so this set is an empty set, all right? So let's go to the second one, two. The set, the set of all squares, the set of all squares with five sides. Of course, you know that's, totally non-existent. The set of all squares with five sides is actually an empty set too. So you have B, which is the collection of all X such that X is a square, a square with five sides. Squares only have four sides. Squares only have four sides. So a square with five sides is an empty set. You can do it this way or this. You don't have to use the two at the same time. You can use either of the two. So they, each of them represents empty set. So that's an empty set. So a set without element is called an empty set or null set or void set. All right, let's go to the next one. Two, you have what you call a singleton set, a singleton set, a singleton set. Of course, the word single is instructive there. Okay, so a singleton set, a singleton set, a singleton set is a set 
that contains that contains exactly exactly one element it contains exactly one element any set that contains exactly one element is a singleton set so it, it is sometimes referred to as a unit set so you can have call it a singleton set or a unit set so it is sometimes it is sometimes sometimes referred to referred to as a unit set as a unit set so a single thin set can also be called a unit set so let's look at possible examples um okay say examples now so the first one the set containing the number seven all right the set containing the the set containing the number seven so there's only one seven that we know containing the number seven so we know only one seven so that's simply c equals seven so it's a singleton set containing seven so this set has exactly one element so it is a singleton okay now can we also see the set of all presidents of the united states born in kenya uh okay uh, well maybe i think a better way to say this is the set of all presidents of the united states with kenyan origin okay the set of all presidents the set of all presidents of the united states of the united states united states with kenyan origin with kenyan origin so as of, as of today right we only know one president with kenyan origin because his father is from kenya okay so in this case that would just be d equals barack obama barack obama that's the only president of the united states of kenyan origin all right so we can say that this d is actually a single thing so you can think of so many things you can think of so many possibilities like that. So that's about single team set. Now let's move on to the next one. Of course, we've talked about this previously, but I think it's uh it's worth mentioning it again. The idea of finite and infinite sets. Three now, finite and infinite sets. Finite and infinite sets so there are types of sets too like we already know for finite sets it is a set is finite like we said already a set is finite if it contains if it contains a limited number a limited number a limited number of elements of elements you can count you can count you can count all the elements all the elements in a finite set in a finite set you can count so for example for example you have um the set of primary colors, okay? The set of primary colors. The set of primary colors is an empty set. I mean, is a finite set, actually. So, for instance, we know there are just three primary colors. They are red, blue, and yellow. Red, blue, and yellow. So, no more, no less. So, here, the cardinality. So, if, you can, if the cardinality of a set is known, then it means it is a finite set. So... Uh, this has three elements, so it is finite. Again, another one. You have the set of days in a week. The set, the set of days in a week. We know all the days in a week, right? So because of that, the set is finite. So we say F is, you know, all of them. Monday, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, right? Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So these are all the days in a week. So because you know what you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that set is also finite. Now, talking about infinite sets, infinite sets. Infinite sets. Again, like we already know, a set is infinite. A set is infinite if it has an unlimited number of elements an unlimited number of elements of elements meaning it goes on indefinitely meaning meaning it goes on it goes on indefinitely indefinitely so that's if that's an infinite set so in terms of examples See what we have. We have for if we have the set of all natural numbers, the set of all natural numbers, the set of all natural numbers. Natural numbers are endless. All right. So if you start counting, you know the beginning, but you don't know the end. So G is one, two, three, four, five. And you can go on forever and ever. Even when you get to one million, you can still keep going for another 1 million years, okay? So that's an infinite set. It has no end. Okay, so two now, we have the set of points on a line. Okay, I've given that example before. Um. Okay, there's this interesting question I like to ask when I'm teaching in class. Like, the set of people on the earth, is it finite? You know, that's, a, that's something we always debate. But of course, uh, Human beings are countable, so we can say in a sense that it's countable. But the trouble again is it may look like it's uncountable because by the time you finish counting the people in Nigeria and then you move to the next country, you know, I, I well, I want to think that maybe the, the way you count it will determine how that is, okay? The way you count it will determine whether it is countable or uncountable. So if there, there's a way we can get all the numbers in an instance, then we can say it's countable, right? So, that, I mean, that's a debate. I like to know what you think about that in the comments uh, section. Okay, so let's talk about the sets, the sets of odd numbers. Of odd numbers is also infinite. Why? Because for odd numbers, right? You can have, you know, it goes on indefinitely to the left. And let's say you start from say minus five, minus three, minus one. Then you go to one, three. Five again, and it goes on indefinitely to the right. So it is. So when you see three, these three dots, tells you tells you of indef uh, infinity. So the set of all of odd numbers is actually infinite. Okay. So um, we've also talked about equal sets, equivalent sets, and all this before. So again. We talk about equal sets, equal sets. Equal sets. So again, two sets, two sets are considered equal. Two sets are considered equal if they contain if they contain the same elements if they contain the same elements if they contain the same elements the order the order in which the order in which the elements are listed in which the elements are listed are listed the order in which the elements the elements are listed 
does not matter. So we talked about this under basic terminologies, like as a kind of introduction. So here we are talking about types of sets. So they still fall here. So if, for instance, I is equal to 246 and J is equal to is equal to 462, 462. So we can still say that I is equal to J. I is equal to J. So because they both contain 246, 246, whether no matter what the arrangement looks like. Another example would be this first example. Second example, if you if K is A, B, C, A, B, C, if K is A, B, C, so the order in which the elements are listed does not matter. Repetitions don't matter too. Repetitions, repetitions don't matter too. Repetitions don't matter too. Okay. So if, if K is A, B, C and, uh, you know, L is C, B, A, A, if you like C again, so K is still equal to L because... Uh, whether A and B, C are repeated, A and C are repeated or not, it doesn't matter. C is C, A is A, no matter how many times each of them appears in that set. So in sets, we are talking about unique collection of elements. So here, K and L are still equal, like we said in the past. Okay, so again, let's talk about equivalent sets. Equivalent sets, equivalent sets. So you should be able to note the difference between equal and equivalent sets. For equivalent sets, you can say that two sets, two sets are equivalent. Two sets are equivalent if they have, if they have the same number, the same number of elements, of elements. Again, that is, they have the same cardinality. They have the same cardinality, the same cardinality, even if the elements themselves, even if the elements themselves are different. So you see that equivalent sets are concerned about the number of elements, not the element themselves. So equal sets are concerned about having the same elements, while equivalent sets are is, uh, about the same number of elements. So uh, you see, if M, example one, if M is one, two, three, and you have N to be A, B, C, so you can see that the cardinality of M is three. And the cardinality of n is equal to three also. So we can still simply say that um, m is equal to n is equal to three. So you can say m and n are equivalent. So m and n are equivalent. So equivalent. So equality talks about same element. Equivalence talks about same number of elements, like I said previously, okay? In the same way, if we have another example and we say we have P, dog, cat, P is dog and cat, all right? And Q is apple, banana, apple and banana. So here we see that the cardinality of P is two, while the cardinality of Q is also two. So what do we have? We say that P equals, the cardinality of P is equal to the cardinality of Q, which is two. So we can say, therefore, P and Q, P and Q are equivalent. So P and Q are equivalent. So equality, same elements, equivalence, same number of elements. And that takes us to the uh, next type of sets. So where we talk about subsets and proper set sets. Pro subsets and proper subsets. Subsets and proper subsets. So we can have subsets and proper subsets. Let's see what that is about. So talking about subsets, 
subsets a set q a set q is a subset a set q is a subset of a set r of a set r if if every element if every element if every element if every element of q if every element of q is also an element of r an element of r in short it's more like um okay every element of q is an element of r so it means R can have more elements, but everything in Q can be found in R, right? So that is when you say that Q is a subset of R. So a subset, a set Q is a subset of a set R. If every element of Q is also an element of R, this is denoted. So this is denoted. This is denoted as Q as a subset of r you know this is like c facing the right hand side um so something like this c facing the right hand side so that's subset okay so you say q so this is denoted as q so is q is a subset of r so it means q everything in q is is found in r or it can everything in so it means that so this simply tells you that everything in R is everything in R is everything in Q, or at least everything in Q is found in R. So when everything is in Q is, is also in R, then it means that Q and R are equal. That's why you have the equality part on there. Okay, so that's uh the idea of subset. So let's take some examples. First example, you have S to be 2,4. And you have t to be 2,4,6. In this case, we can say that S is a subset of T because S contains every element in S is found in T, although T has more, all right? So you can say that S is a subset. Now, another way we can see this is this. We can say that um, we can also have another example say two uh we have s if imagine that s is uh s is equal to a b c and t is equal to a b c also is equal to a b c so you can still say that s is a subset of t although this time around they are more like equal sets but we can still say that because everything in S is also found in T. So in the, in this case, T has more. Here, they are exactly the same. So let's take one, one more example under this. Uh, imagine that you have U, which is the collection of all X, such that X is a vowel, such that X is a vowel. You already know that that, that set is A-I-O-U, right? So if you have that, and then we now have V again, which is A E. I O U. They are basically the same, right? They are basically the same. So, but then you can say U is a subset of V. You won't also be wrong to say that U is equal to V because they are actually equal set because they contain the same number. I mean, they contain the same elements. I mean, uh, not number, they contain the same elements. Of course, the equality and cardinality will also be the same, right? In that case. Um, yeah. So interestingly, this is just an aside it will also be correct to say that the cardinality of U is the cardinality of V because if they contain exactly the same elements, then they contain the same number of elements each. So that's that's that for subsets. Can we talk about proper subsets then? Proper subsets. So the word proper should tell you something. The word proper tells you something. Proper subsets now. So you can say that a set Q, a set Q, is a proper is a proper subset is a proper subset of a set r of a set r if q is a if q 
is a subset of R, but but Q is not equal to R, but Q is not equal to R. So this simply means, this means R has at least, R has at least one element, one element not in Q. So that means everything in Q is found in R, but R has some things that are not in Q. So in that case, you talk about proper subsets. So you can denote proper subset this way. Proper subsets, proper subsets are denoted, are denoted, are denoted by this. Q is a proper subset of R. Okay, the equality is not there because Q and R are not equal. So talking about merely subsets, as you can see here, we have this example where these two sets are exactly the same. And the same also goes for number three. So so for subsets, right, the, the two sets can either be, they can be equal, you know, but here they cannot be equal. But then everything you, you, that you, found, you find in Q is also in R. So th this is how to talk about proper subsets. Okay, let's take an example. Imagine you have W to be one, two. W is one, two. That's a set W is one, two. And then you have um, set X to be one, two, three. So here now, everything in W is in X, but X has more things than W. So in that case, you can say pr W is a proper subset of X. So that's the idea of proper subset. Then number two, um, you have Y, which is equal to AB, and you have Z, which is ABC, okay? So in this case, it, Y is a proper subset of Z, so you can just write that. Y is a proper subset of Z. So with that, we come to the end of this video about types of sets now there are other types of sets we are going to discuss uh in the next video but i think they, they, uh, they need to be discussed separately so and when we get there we'll talk about them so if you have not subscribed to this channel feel free to do that make sure you hit the notification bell so you can get alerted each time a new video is released also make sure to comment like and share in your comments tell me uh uh, the number of people is the number of people on earth is it a finite or infinite set you know so and tell me if you have any question you have a confusion you have you need me to solve a particular problem let me know so see you when next we uh you know come here bye